Hey guys, praise the Lord. I love you. Jesus Christ is going to rapture his bride right away, real soon. During the Pentecost, during Shavuot, during counting of the weeks, there are three 49 day sections. We count from the Resurrection Sunday, which is barley. We count 50 days, 49 days, you, you know, how we Americans count. And it's from Sunday to sun, Sunday to Sunday, barley harvest to the wheat harvest. Then we count another 49 days. We take it takes us from the wheat harvest to the grapes. And then another 49 days takes us from the grapes to the olives. And then six days of counting the wood. And then everybody is getting excited after they've harvested all their crops, all their vegetables, all their fruit and nuts. They're getting ready to all head to Jerusalem, all the males. Every six years, they are required to come. And on that seventh year, they, along with their entire families, are required to come because th that's called the Feast of Tabernacles. That is the seventh feast in all of the feast in Leviticus 23. And so everybody comes every seven years so they can hear the Bible read. Genesis to Deuteronomy. Man, amen. Vandal says, hey man, count up the Omer Pentecost. Today is day 26. 26 is the gospel. 26 is Jehovah, yod heh vav -Heh. And it's also not just 26 of 50. It's 26 of the total 153-day count. Okay? And so the, the in-gathering is the time to celebrate. God wants everybody in Jerusalem. And the purpose of it is to fellowship and party and song and dance around the Lord and His provision and His goodness and His awesomeness. And that's the requirement. There is going to be no sorrow. There's going to be no depression, only joy and happiness and rejoicing and festivities and feasting and partying before the Lord. That's the key line. Before the Lord. Do all of this with the Lord. Include the Lord. And so that is this year, October, November. November something, guys. I forget when uh, the... We know that the 6th is the 10th day. So five days later, the 11th. 11-11, what? What? 11-11 begins tabernacles. So, and we know that the spring-summer rapture goes from May 5th. So we go June, July, August, September, October, November. November. November is when the spring-summer ends on God's calendar. And then they get ready for planting the winter wheat. And it starts over again. Praise the Lord. Now, I want you to catch me, and I want you to catch me clearly. Sean has never produced a code saying what day. Hey, thanks, Vado. November 11th. Boom. 11-11. That is huge, because we're going to see that in, uh, you know, today's Bible code. Sean is 11-11. Uh, Sean has never produced a code that said the day of the rapture is this. And I have never said the day of the rapture is this. Now, what I have said, I said there's a science pointing to a bunch of uh, some a perfect day right now. Okay. Here in July, you know, the first segment, 11-11 Tabernacles, praise God. The first segment to the wheat harvest ends on July 9th. Okay. And then 10 days after that, that 10 keeps popping up. Right. Nine days after that is Sean's birthday. He turns 4, 6, which is a 10. 4 plus 6 is a 10. God's always showing us the numbers. He's always pointing to where he's at. Okay? July 19th happens to be the biggest day in Freemasonry. That's their new year of the, on the Egyptian calendar. That's huge. That's not just coincidence. Okay? 7, 18, Sean's birthday is the last day of their calendar. That's a big thing. We know that they are coming to the end of the old and they plan on destroying the old to build the new. It's in all the movies. It's in, it's their motto of the Freemasons. It's what they're going with. Okay. So we have all that we're pointing to. So I'm, we're not saying thus saith the Lord on this. Okay. But uh, July 19th. 17, 
J J July 19 is where I'm at. It's Saban 17, which is God's third month. You know, John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish on this date. The 16th is Sean's birthday. Saban 16 is the 18th. Shall not perish, but they shall have everlasting life in a glorified body, rapture day. For God sent not his son into this world to damn the world, but that the world through him might be delivered from being damned. That's 17, 317. It's great verses right there that we've always preached. God's salvation has three faces to it and a fourth. Because that day we get our glorified bodies, there is a there is just a small segment there called the rapture that happens instantaneously. We'll be in the sky. And it'll be something that we will experience. We will experience the travel process to the cloud. Sean's had the dream, and several people have had the dream of their rapture. And they're sucked up fast. And here they come, and they experience it. So I'm excited about experiencing it, getting that glorified body. So that salvation... Jesus Christ, the salvation of Yah, that's what Yeshua means. Savan 17, John 3, 17 equals July 17. Uh, yeah, that'll be, uh, it'll be July 19. S Savan 16 is Sean's birthday, which is July 18th. And Savan 17 is, of course, the next day, which will be the 19th. Okay, so our 719 is God's 317. And we got those verses going together. The end of the old, which happens to be on Sean's birthday, the end of the old era, 5,000 years of Egyptian calendar, of Egyptian events. And they want to destroy all that because Egypt is represented by the USA. They have made us Egypt, little Egypt. We're referred to as Egypt. Remember, Jerusalem, God called it uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and the, the wickedness there, you know. And uh, spiritual wicked Egypt, okay? And so we are that now. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Savan 17 equals July 19. Kaboom, kapow! Now, don't you dare go quoting people, oh, Johnny Bowie said that the rapture's going to be on 719. But, what does Vino say? There are many intersections that could happen in the physical realm, spiritual realm, and uh, history that point to July 19. Hello, hello, hello. And how about today's fresh manna from heaven? It points right to it. Let's go look at that. You guys want to see that new... Bible code that Sean just dropped from heaven. Heather says, praise God. Jehovah loves us so much. He wants us to seek him and know when we're going home. I'm excited about that. And just because he hadn't dropped a verse on us and a Bible code on us saying, okay, y'all, I'm going to come get you on Savan 17th, my calendar, and July 13th on the Satanic Pagan Gregorian calendar, or on July 19th. He's not given us that code yet, and it's, I, I, I am convinced he's kept us from finding it because that's, a big, that, that's the biggest date in Christianity after the day you were saved. We're supposed to be watching and ready. Yes, please. We're supposed to be watching and ready, and we're also going to know the day. He told us we would. The children of the darkness don't know the day, but the children of light, we do. We're, we're children of the day, so therefore we'll know the day. Okay, and the closer we get to it, uh, we'll probably find a proof text, probably find a Bible code or a hundred that just open up. Remember, God, God will have to open our eyes, give us revelation to the thing, and He's not ready for it to happen just yet. But there's gonna, they're there because it's gonna prove to the Jews, it's gonna prove to the Trib Saints. That it was in the Bible, it's in the Bible code, the day of our departure, and it was right there for everybody to see. I'm convinced of it. Now, all that being said, I want to go look at July 19th again, don't you? What is July 19th? It's 10 days after we have concluded the first segment of counting. The first segment of counting from the day Jesus rose from the dead to the 50th day 
is July 9th, and that is on the wheat. That is when the sickle is put to the wheat. And then we count 50 more days from the wheat to the grapes, okay? And that's where we find ourselves. And I think it's awesome. Let's look at this brand new code from two hours ago. Praise the Lord. Sean says, this very significant Torah code, that means Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. What the program does, you, you choose where you want to look. Say, I, I'm going to do a search in the Torah only. Well, it'll take the very first character of Genesis and the very last character of Deuteronomy and attach them to, to each other in a circle. So there's no other books included, just the five books of the Torah of the Pentateuch of the law. Okay, all these terms go for that. Then, I don't know what he looked for. I don't know if he looked for Jubilee. I don't know if he looked for the future. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking future because it's in red. Okay, there are six terms, guys. You want to see how God, God is amazing? There are six terms that are standing straight up and down here. All at this magnanimous skip of 111,526. Okay? God's amazing. This is God at work. If you can't see this, it's because you're blind and you better cry out, Lord, remove the scales from my blind eyes. And quit singing Amazing Grace until, you know, I once was blind, but now I see. Make sure you see before you ever sing that song again. So many blind folks singing that. Oh, I just see, Lord, I see nothing. I see this black stuff right behind my eyelids. Lord, I see it. I see it. And you don't see nothing. You better pray to have God open your eyes. Amen? Amen. All right. So we're looking at this brand new code, this fresh manna from heaven. Guys, this is God's word. You are a privileged gang. You are a privileged gang to hear this. Nobody else on earth has ever seen this yet. It's like when Moses came down from the mountain with the law. He said, hey guys, I got something to show you. I just brought down some fresh manna. I know it's rock. It's a reverse miracle. Instead of turning uh, rocks to bread, we've turned bread into rock here. The fresh word, the manna. Amen. Josh says, hey, family. Hey, buddy. So privileged. Hallelujah, says Heather. I'm right there with you. Incredible code today, says Alicia. Let's check it out, okay? This is from God. You guys want to know? Get some details about the rapture, when God's a-coming. Gary says, hallelujah, praise the Lord, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Jesus Christ, he is Christ. He's worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus, for your forgiveness and mercy on us each day. Salvation's a free gift, y'all. A free gift. Will you reach out and take it? He's died for everybody. You ain't got to do anything to, to come up and meet God at his standard. The standard is you are a pathetic, rotten sinner, okay? And you contaminate everything you touch and breathe on. So Jesus Christ came down to you to save you. He took your sin upon him, your guilt, your, your everything that does, was going straight to hell with you. And he took it upon him. And now he's called on you to believe that in his shed blood, the price that he paid, the redemption price through his death. And he didn't just sh shed blood and that was it. The key was raising from the dead as well. All three segments. He died, he was buried, and he rose. Will you believe that? Amen. Uh, we have Vondel saying the ELS of the main terms is 16 plus 1 equals victory. Hello. That's where we are. All right, let's check this out. Uh, Vondel says he saw the future adds to 16. The year of Jubilee adds to, oh, please. Uh, 16 plus 1, 17. Amen. Let's check it out. This very significant code, Torah code, the five books wrapped. He saw the future is at an ELS of 11,000, or I'm sorry, 111,526. Now, this number contains a message and identifies me, Sean Mitchell, as the subject of the code. Bible number 111 is fear of the Lord, while the Hebrew gematria, uh, now, what is Hebrew gematria? When God gave Adam and those language, Enoch, they were speaking Hebrew. They only have 22 characters in the Hebrew language, and they don't have any numbers. So the A, Aleph, equals 1. The Bet 
equals two, so they're alphanumeric. So every time a Jew, somebody who understands the, the Hebrew, reads a word, they're also seeing a number right in front of them because the, each character represents a number of a value of a number. Okay, so numbers are letters, and so the Hebrew gematria of five twenty six is when Sean says. He puts his name in, Sean Mitchell, boom, and in Hebrew letters, and it comes up and it says 526. Sean Mitchell equals 526, and here it is here. The fear of the Lord and Sean Mitchell. That is, that is what this is saying, okay? This, the number of skips throughout, which is also the Hebrew gematria of the word rapture. So Sean Mitchell equals rapture equals 526. So when you see 526, we're thinking of Sean, God's man, God's Moses. He's the descendant of Moses. And also the rapture. So don't overlook those numbers when you're out and about on a license plate. Oh, dude. My buddy Rick showed me Nebraska's license plate today. Man, dude, I wish I could. I wish I had remembered that right now. But it was, it was presented. They are required by law to have a new license plate every six years in Nebraska. So the guy who won the bid to design it, he drew what's on the floor at the state building. And what it is, is a Roman God who's gathering the earth, wind, and fire, all the elements for himself to build a better. I mean, it is satanic to the max. And then, oh, oh, find that for me, Rick, if you're on here, man. Um, the letters were like for... Poseidon, there were three letters and then 720, uh, 719. Okay, I, I, dude, somebody look up Nebraska's new license plate. And you'll see that there's three letters and then 719 right there. Okay, God is giving us a massive sign in the new Nebraska plate. Why is that important? Because the guy that had the Georgia Guidestones built lives in Nebraska. Ted Turner. Big, huge connection. Bill Gates owns tons of land there. Okay? There's some underground bunkage happening right there. When you're driving down I-80 towards Colorado or from Colorado to, you know, it, it, you're in Nebraska. Grand Island, Nebraska. They've got this archway going over there, guys. An archway going over the interstate. And it's all about a demonic portal right there. Okay? And the new license plate. Is the is the I, can't, I wish I could remember it. It's the letters for Poseidon and the the, the rulers from the abyss. The, the three letters stand for that. Okay, which which name do you want? And then it says, and and what, why is Poseidon important? Why why is the P there? Because of seven nineteen. That's when Poseidon's power is going to come because he is the beast from the sea, the ocean. Okay. Okay, Cheryl's got it right here. And, and Vondel's put up a link for it. It's ADP. A is Apollo. Uh, D is the Destroyer. And P is Poseidon, guys. Is everybody tracking with me just yet? And it says 718. Now, yeah, 718. 718, the end of the era. Okay, that's what it was, 718. Thanks, guys. So you got Apollo, Destroyer, and Poseidon. Right there, 718. It's right there on the plate, the earth, wind, and fire plate of the Roman god, it said. It said a, a Roman citizen. It's a Roman god, Nephilim, doing that. And it's brand new. Thanks, guys, for posting that. All right, so there's some more dates pointing to 718, 719. You guys see it? All right. Let's go back to this code. It says, Sean's talking. He says, this very significant Torah code of he saw the future is at an ELS of 111526. This number contains a message and identifies me, Sean Mitchell, as the subject of the code. Bible number 111 is fear the Lord, while the Hebrew gematria of 526 is Sean Mitchell and also rapture. Deuteronomy 719 contains 107 letters appearing like a mirror, backwards and forwards. It says 71917 going one way and 
one seven going the other way. It's a mirror. And it has a three, Vando says, that the license plate as the month on the plate. Okay? Savan, everybody tracking. That license plate is a note to the entire world. Because Nebraska is the heart of America, and they'll probably be safe on that date. Because they're in the very middle of the United States. Okay? Praise God. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, I, I saw that this morning. Rick shared that with me, and I was getting ready to go into work. I'm like, what, what, what? And uh, then I totally forgot about it because, you know, work kind of took over, and it takes over where I work. And I'm uh, just now thinking about it. So thanks for posting all that. So we got these uh, mirror numbers here going on, 71917 and 71917, a mirror going both ways. Now, what is that? 71 was the year... That's how old Sean's mama was, and she's a timekeeper. She's God's timekeeper for us. Time segments, numbers. Her numbers are vital, okay? And God told us that. God tells us that in the Bible code. And so then we have the 19 and the 17 again. We got 17, 19, and 71, okay? Josh is mind-blowing, and it's right there in front of you guys. Are we making this up? Or is it right there in front of you? Having eyes to see, they see not. Having ears to hear, they hear not. But we say, hey, why don't you hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches? He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And what your eyes are seeing. You ain't making nothing up. You're just looking straight at a license plate. Okay? They're telling the story. Uh, and, and these numbers we're talking about in Deuteronomy are showing right here at the bottom of this report. God's numbers are amazing, Sean says, and so does Johnny Bo. Johnny Bo says God's numbers are amazing. Do you say that? Uh, God's numbers are amazing. He declares the end from the very beginning. You know, Genesis 49, when he was Colorado area code 719, how about that? When, when he was, Jacob was dying and he called all the boys together. And he presented the future of what you guys would look like at the end of days. What Reuben would look like. What, and all the way through the list. And he gets down there to uh, Judah. And he's talking about the lawbringer. And, and the scepter will not depart out of his house until Shiloh comes. Shiloh is Jesus being described there. That's the end from the beginning. This guy didn't even have a Bible. He's on his deathbed declaring this prophecy that Moses later writes for us in this, these five books that we're talking about right now. And this code is found in those five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, at a skip of 111526. Incredible. Okay? Look, let's look at that verse. In Isaiah 46, what? Isaiah is 23, uh, Isaiah, yeah, is the 23rd book. It's year 2-3. 46 is what Sean will turn on 718, which equals 10. Okay? 10 is very important. God, God has been pointing that number out, man. Okay? And that's why we're excited about 10 days after the ninth, 10 days after the first uh, wheat is sickled. And then we got these dates going on. We got this license plate. We got these guys talking their plans. Guys, guys, God has put it in their heart to do it on a certain date. And they're all excited about it. They are so excited they can't hardly sit still. Meanwhile, American Christians have no idea it's happening and they're so excited about getting the white right weenies for their 4th of July weenie roast. And they're about to get roasted, folk. All right. Here, let's read this verse. This is so very good. Isaiah 46, 10 and 11. Declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure, calling a ravenous bird from the east. Now, this was a king, okay? The ravenous bird from the east, Cyrus, the king to do God's bidding. Now it's Obama. Obama is this king of Babylon. And God's putting it in his heart to do all these things. Blow America up. Obama obliges. He hates America. So it's in his heart. And he's been leading the, the pack the whole way, okay? 
calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it. I will bring it to pass. I have purposed it, and I will do it. So he's doing the same thing with Sean Mitchell. He's working his, in his heart, showing him the ways of righteousness, holiness, God's heart, God's way, a humble man doing the work of God versus a proud man, wicked man doing the work of God, Barack Obama. And these two are head-butting all the way through the first three and a half years of the tribulation when Sean comes back. It's, it's Sean versus Obama, and Obama will hate this guy beyond, and the other guy too, and won't be able to do anything to him. And these guys will be a thorn in his pride for a long time, three and a half years, until Satan enters him. And God will let down the hedge of protection around these guys in their glorified bodies and allow them to be ambushed and killed. And God declares the end from the beginning. Now, guys, that hadn't happened yet. But you and I read the Bible and it says it happened. Because God declares the end from the beginning. Now, do you believe God? You're going to go with God on this by faith? Amen. Alicia says, God's numbers are indeed amazing. He shows them to us with eyes to see. They bring joy, insight, peace, revelation. Thank you, Lord. Don't they? Don't they? Everywhere you go, guys, when you learn his numbers. And like we said, his alphabet, 22 letters are, are, are all the numbers that the Jews ever use, will ever need to use. Amen. All right, let's look at the translation. This is a, an official code by Sean Mitchell. He's the only one approved, approved by God to do these codes. And here is God's voice in God's dialect, the translation. Sean Mitchell sh saw the future with amazement and humility. Hello? The year of Jubilee, the year of the rapture. This is the year of Jubilee, guys. We knew that. You know, 50 years of abortions. Satan knew exactly when the year of Jubilee was. Remember, 1973 is when the Yom Kippur War was. 50 years ago, a Jubilee ago. Remember all that? Secretariat outrunning all the horses, getting a triple crown, pointing to this day 50 years ago. We just finished the Belmont Stakes this last Saturday. The third race of three. 50 years ago, Secretariat, all these 50s are in there, placed, showing us we are at the Jubilee. We are at the 50th year. This will be the time of rapture. So translation, Sean Mitchell sh saw the future with amazement and humility. The year of Jubilee, the year Jehovah caught up Moses and the book. Caught up Moses and the book. That's Sean, guys. Sean is Moses and the book. So he's the, represent, he's the representative, he's the ambassador that we, all the body of Christ, remember the 24 elders are the representation of all the body of Christ, all the bride of Christ. Everybody who's been saved and have placed their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for the last 1,993 years. Sean is the guy, God's saying, when you see him caught up, you better have been caught up too or you've been left behind. You're not part of the body. You're not part. So, guys, before we go on, we're going to encourage you to make sure that you're saved. Am I for 100% sure? And do I have peace about it that I'm going to heaven? Do I know that I'm pleasing God with what? My belief. Your belief pleases him. Your faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So, what, what has your faith declared? That I'm a sinner and God's the Savior. Jesus Christ is the Savior. And he came down from heaven to die in my place that I deserved. I deserved the justice that Jesus got. And he didn't deserve it. But he suffered my justice. What was coming my way. What was coming your, humanity's way. And Jesus took our punishment from the Father in our places. And all the way through the death, burial, and resurrection. His shed blood. Paying the price. Do you believe that? Do you believe that's the only way you can get to heaven and there's nothing you can do or add to it your answer must be yes and you'll please the father and you'll be saved believe in the death burial and resurrection of the lord jesus christ on your behalf and you'll be saved oh sirs what must i do to be saved that's Acts 16 31 a question was asked 
And Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And so will anybody who believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make sure that that is you before we move on here. So the year of Jubilee, that's right now. Guys, this is the year of Jubilee, 50 years later. I mean, it's right here in front of our face. The year Jehovah, yod heh caught up Moses and the book, the scoffing of Sean Mitchell, the interpreter of the time of the two olive trees and lampstands of Jehovah, you dumb re-rees who scoff Sean, making fun of him. He has been written in the Bible as the lampstand of God, one of two. He's the only guy that's allowed to bring us from the mountain God's holy word and God's holy, awesome, wonderful, amazing, sweet dialect. His fire, his poetry, his thunders. And people making fun of God makes note of them. God makes note of you, you scoffing idiot. The scoffing of Sean Mitchell. The, and he, who is, who is this, this Sean Mitchell? God says he's the interpreter of time of the two olive trees and the lampstands of Jehovah. He's mine. The USA. Thou didst blow with thine wind. The sea covered them and they sank as lead in the mighty waters. You know, the same time as the rapture in the year of Jubilee. This is the year of Jubilee. The man of God's talking, the humble, holy man of God. Sean Mitchell 526 is speaking. Let's look here. He's got a note. He says, the term Russian also appears in Exodus 15, 9 to 10 at an ELS of 11. Now, what, is the, what do those verses say? Now, guys, that line is the very bottom line at the very bottom, the last line of text just above the Deuteronomy 719. What? Deuteronomy 719? 719, Deuteronomy is the fifth book, five grace, gift. 719, so shall the Lord thy God do unto all the people of whom you've been afraid. He's going to wipe them out. But that line just above that, the bottom line of the code is where these verses I'm about to read are found. Okay, that's that bottom line. Exodus 15, 7 to 12. And in the greatness of your excellency, you have overthrown them that rose up against you, Lord. You sent us forth your wrath, which consumed them as stubble, and with the blast of your nostrils. Remember, it was his wonderful sweet breath into our nostrils that gave us life. And man wanted to make death out of his life and wanted to get rid of the life giver and wanted to get rid of God. And we don't want nothing to do with him. So now God's coming with his nostrils of anger and going to blow up a tempest, a wave, a destruction. Uh, Vondo has put up the, the verse here. Exodus 15, 9. We're reading 7 to 12. And with the blast of your nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The floods stood upright as a heap. And the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. Thou didst blow with thy wind. The sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. Who is like unto you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Thou stretchest out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them. 719. Y'all see that little thing up there? I'm not, God hadn't given us no, nothing but little small clues. Do you see that big one in big font at the very bottom? Deuteronomy 719. So shall the Lord thy God do unto all the people of whom you've been afraid. Now, Remember Sean telling us about his numbers, that little black square at the bottom left where it says Sean Mitchell, and then in three different ciphers, okay? Uh, you got the Hebrew standard, the Hebrew uh, ordinal, and the Hebrew reduction, okay? There's three, three different ciphers, and you'll see 526 right there. That's Sean's name, Sean Mitchell, and 94 and 31. You guys know that every one of those totals to 13, 13, and 31, which totals to 444. 
Sean's total numbers. Sean Mitchell, 444. Remember all that? It's right there in his cipher of his names. Hebrew, Hebrew, Hebrew. 13, 13, 31. 444. Door, door, door. Y'all ready to be raptured? I am too. I'm excited about it. All right. Now, guys, look here. Look at the very bottom line, that verse that we just read. On the, on the shaded gray table, all those characters going this way, those are plain text verses in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That very bottom line includes these that we read from Exodus. Exodus 15, 7 to 12. Exodus 15, 9. Now, look at this very closely, okay? Right there, you see that line at the very bottom where it says, He caught up? He caught up. It's on, uh, it's on like the second line of text. Right below that is that little red, looks like an N, like for Nebraska, Nebraska N. That is the letter in USA. USA has four letters that gives us USA. Right on that same line is a resh, and that's where Russia is. Russia and USA, do you know what phrase they meet in, in that verse? Mighty waters. Sean has left Russia out of this so the Jews can find it and see that it's there when he goes to preaching to them in the tribulation. He said, like, you see all this, that this happened and Sean preached the end from the beginning. It hadn't happened yet, but when he comes back, it will have happened. And with great force, with a ferociousness, the stories will have made everybody's hearts cry. These Jews he'll be witnessing to, some of them will have made the trip after the destruction and made it to Israel. And he will be talking to them. And he will be preaching to them. And they will see, because they, you know, read Hebrew. And they'll see that that skip is there. And they're going to say, uh, wow, it was there the whole time. It was there the whole time. And it's right under the he caught up joining USA and Russia together in the phrase in Exodus, mighty waters. What? The end from the beginning. Hey, aren't you excited to be part of this group who's listening to the voice of God and hearing a fresh word of God? Here's the emphasis of what we've been studying. All these Bible codes together. God, very soon, I'm looking at right now, July 19th. July 18th going into the 19th. It still might be the 18th on the West Coast. It might be 1.33 a.m. on the East Coast, 12.33, or I, I like the, the 1, 2, 3, 4. I've always seen that number. God has always shown me 1, 2, 3, 4, 12.34. It'd be 1.34 on the East Coast, 12.34 here where I am. That's the next day, isn't it? That takes me from the 18th to the 19th. Amen. And then Mountain and Pacific will still be on the 18th. So here we are at the 18th and 19th, the end and the beginning of the Egyptian calendar, which has been in play for 5,000 years with the Freemasons. That's all of your American presidents. That's the calendar they're working on, the demonic one. And they've come to the end of it because they want a new world order and they're going to come up with a new world order and Barack Obama will be the lead Assyrian for that whole bunch. He'll be the idol shepherd, the one, the shepherd who's worshipped. He'll be their idol. And here we are. And all these Bible codes point to the Russians attacking the United States of America, destroying it utterly, especially New York City is, is the focus. Going to put it absolutely underwater. There will be nobody left to live in New York City. The waters will come inland for miles the whole East Coast, Upper East Coast for sure, will be drowned in underwater. It'll all be contaminated because this water that's coming in off these uh, submarine nukes, 
these drone nukes from Russia called the Poseidon, and their nickname for it is Satan. Satan is going to attack America. It's God doing it, but Satan's his puppet. Satan put it in the heart of his puppet, Obama, to do this. And Obama get, got with all the boys and said, guys, we're about to head into a new world order. Why don't we do away with the old one? And we're going to use all your utensils. China, we're going to need you. We're going to need your laboratories. Russia, we're going to need you. We're going to need your expertise in nukes and submarines. They have the best naval submarine unit on planet Earth. They know the waters better than anybody on planet Earth. Russia. And so that's who he's going to use. And that's, they really understand the mighty waters. And they're going to take the mighty waters and they're going to drown the United States with them and destroy us. This will be the cause, the reason there needs to be a world leader pop up. And Obama, what? You need a world leader? What? 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 Going to be all humble and fakey. And just, oh, you ever see an interview with he and Michelle, Michael? And and they just acting all humble when they're describing each other. And Barack's such a good husband, and he's such a good father to these kids. And he's over there looking all humble. He's a faggot, and they ain't never had the first kid. The whole thing's a lie. Michelle is a dude. Catherine says, man, our God's amazing. He is amazing. Juliet says, very excited, very excited. Heather says, I just got a message that I can no longer use the heart comment as I have exceeded my limit. She can't use the heart icon, guys, because she's exceeded her limit in loving stuff. They're trying to squelch us out. They're trying to drown us out. Oh, hey, guys, I need to remind us this weekend, this weekend is um, that three-day weekend. Okay, Juneteenth. This is a very wicked, wicked thing. He is FTM, Barack born F. Here, I will add some for you. Votto threw out some hearts. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Wow, Heather. I tell you what, we're right close. We're right close. And so the, that's what we're waiting on. The, the subs are all, guys. The United States of America is surrounded. Those subs are sitting right on the bottom of the ocean, nuclear and stealth, waiting for that little 20-year-old to hit a button. Everything go rise up to the level, and then they're going to start pursuing inland. They're going to get up to 62 miles per hour, and when they get to their point of detonation, they're going to go off, boom, and then the rapture will happen simultaneously. And God will save us. Vano says, I just got it, got it too, that message about the heart. You can't serve, share hearts anymore. They're after us, guys. They are after us. They hate this Bible study. They hate this Bible study. They hate these Bible codes. They hate Sean. They hate Sean. The witches come against him all the time. They're always trying to do incantations and spells against him. They can't even make it to his apartment. God's got him protected. He's God's guy. He's saved. When you're saved, the devils can't get at you, dog. Okay? Unless you're like Job and God lets down your hedge and says, okay, get after him and test him. And then they'll get to testing. And you, your responsibility is to remain faithful and let the fruit of the Spirit be developed up in you, man. All right. Hey, was that awesome? I, I do want, let's read, let's read the, Translation again, okay? This, this brand new code that was just dropped less in, in three hours ago, three hours ago. God declaring the end from the beginning and telling us what's up. So what is up, God? He says, Sean Mitchell saw the future with amazement and humility. That's the key here, guys. You people that ain't amazed with these Bible codes, you're proud, arrogant, fool, and you will. If, let's just, just suppose you're saved. You're going to be so ashamed of the judgment seat of Christ. What a fool you have been and what rewards you have missed out on. Because you weren't amazed and humble at these Bible codes. And only those who were amazed and humbled at these Bible codes, God will highly exalt. God resisteth the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Amen. It's the year of Jubilee, the year Jehovah Caught up Moses and the book, the scoffing of Sean Mitchell. Who, who Sean Mitchell? The interpreter of time and the two olive trees, the lampstand. 
you scoffing idiots. I'm, I'm calling on you to repent and sackcloth and ashes and crowds of Lord say, I have been a fool making fun of this guy and your codes, Lord. Do it on this side. Do it now. Uh, the USA. God, you did blow with your wind. The sea covered. This is God doing this, guys. They can blame it on the Russians and the aliens all day long. This is God doing this to America. God hates America, and he's going to judge them. They've had more than enough time, and this is the year of Jubilee, the 50th year in so many areas, guys. You, what you need to do is go look at uh, 1973 timeline and see what all happened in 1973, 50 years ago. And there's your Jubilee, 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 Jubilee since then. Thou didst blow with thy wind, the sea covered them, the sea covered them, the sea covered them, them the United States, them New York. They sank as lead, never to be seen again. Whew. Russian and USA meeting in mighty waters. Hello? Okay, let's look at a code from the past. How about November 5th, 2021? Hallelujah, victory belongs to our Lord, says Heather. Vano says, while you're repenting, please download the ebook Bible Codes Unsealed by Sean Mitchell. Down, Sean, uh, or Vondo puts up this link every night in every one of these sermons, guys. And he does it in YouTube and BitChute as well. The link for the Bible code is there. Familiarize yourself with the six thunders, the six present thunders of God that John wasn't allowed to write. But Sean was called upon to write. He's in his eighth year of doing this. To the glory of God. Eight's new beginnings, folks. Seven is, seven is perfection. Having completed the task. He's completed the task. And we're now beginning a new one. He's going to continue in his eighth year to reveal to the Jews thunder number seven. And the rest of the thunders that belong in the book. Okay. Amen. And yeah, uh, I, I skipped all that tonight. I was talking, but uh, pray for Sean. Take care of him. Cheryl's sharing some hearts here for us, guys. So we just borrow some from her. Uh, take care of Sean. Pray, pray for him. Give to him. Now, this is Juneteenth. This is what I was getting at. This is a three-day weekend that they have just worked up to be on Monday. This is the first time, you know, the first couple times it's an a national deal. So the banks are closed. And this, I'm, what I'm getting at is pray about how much money you ought to leave in the bank that you want stolen. Okay? Just pray about that. Because I think we're there. We as Christians, we're going to be gone here, I believe, in a month and a half. Okay? Hmm. Less than that, but you know what I'm saying. So that's coming up this week. Pray for wisdom, whatever you got to do, whatever you feel you need to do, and do that. All right, this code is from November 5th, 2021. Who is against Jehovah and dies? Hmm, who's against Jehovah and dies? The Antichrist? Gog? Barack Obama? Yeah. Daniel 7 11, 8 25, 11 36, 2 Thessalonians 2 8. And I mean, the verses go on. Sean says, Gog, that's the leader. In Ezekiel 38, 39, and the Antichrist are one and the same person. Ezekiel 38, 17. What? Ezekiel is the 26th book. 3 and 8 is 11. That's the mystery in 17. The mystery of 17. God 17. Saban 17. Hmm. Very interesting stuff here. Proves this fact beyond doubt because Scripture interprets Scripture. Amen. Bono's got the link up here, guys. Check it out. Thus says the Lord, this is Isaiah, Ezekiel, okay, Ezekiel 38, 17, Isaiah 14, and Daniel 11. Thus says the Lord God, thou, art thou he of whom I have spoken in old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in these days, and he's talking about these three prophets, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Daniel, which prophesied those days many years that I would bring you against them? And some more of Sean's commentary. Vino says the ELS of this is 19 of this code, which is faith and the date, I believe. 
I believe God is telling us a date when Obama strikes because of the pride in his heart, and then God very soon will start the time clock and then come to kill this guy because this guy's against God. He thinks he's coming against God because he's coming against a Christian nation. And this is God doing it because this ain't no Christian nation. And God's using him as his puppet to destroy it. We just saw all that in the code earlier. Okay. 19. Okay. Sean continues. The Lord God is speaking directly to Gog of Magog. He of whom I have spoken. That's concerning Gog. It is evident in searching through all the other books of the prophets of Israel that the Antichrist referred to many times by many names, but here in Ezekiel is the only place in the Bible we have a reference to a prince called Gog, G-O-G. So if God's servants, the prophets of Israel, prophesied in those days many years that I would bring you Gog against them. Gog and the Antichrist have to be the same person because the only person who ever talks, names him Gog, is Ezekiel. The other guys were talking the same story, but they called him something else, the Antichrist. So they're the same guy. Because the only person the others prophesied about invading Israel was the Antichrist. And here is the code by Sean Mitchell, official, and God's word in his dialect. Translation, who is against Jehovah, yod heh vav and dies? He has revealed, uh, let's see, and he revealed his target, Barack Obama. Fire to Obama. The word appeared on high. Behold, he will smite, kill with words, the breath of the lamb. The breath of the lamb, destroying, utter destruction. Nobody has ever seen a, a lamb on a tirade like this. Because lambs don't go on tirades. But this one does. The breath of the lamb. The Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them. Vengeance with slaughter by the hand of Jesus, Yeshua. Now, this is the bold judgments at the very end. They're happening at the same time Jesus shows up on the scene to destroy. Okay, And every time Vondo puts up these links... The 153 is right there in front of our face. I love it. We got one or 10. Let's look at this. 10. There's that big 10 that keeps coming back. Barry, are you listening? 153 and then 19. That's faith. That's a date. And then before the 19 is a 7. 719 right here. We got 153 and 719 coming at each other this way. In this particular link. I'm guessing it's like that in all of them. 719s right there, guys. Okay, and then we see the 59, what is that, 14? Five plus nine is 14, and then the 44, that's Obama. I mean, come on, dude. 11 and 16, those numbers are right there in every one of these links that Vondo puts up. That last one will change, become the new link. But let's look at this first, Exodus 15. What? Didn't we just look at that in the last code? This is from a year and a half ago. The code we're looking at right now, a year and a half ago, and we just looked at that code today with the same passage in it. What does it say? Let's see here. Where did it go? Exodus. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy. And in the greatness of thine excellence excellency thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sentest forth thy wrath and consumed them. As stubble. Now listen. Listen closely. God just used this same verse in talking about destroying the United States and using Obama to do it. Then at the end of seven years, he's going to use this same verse to destroy Obama because they're all his enemies. The United States is his enemies. The United Nation is his enemy. Barack Obama, the man who defied God and who did God kill? Barack Obama. Same verse we just looked at. Amen. Same, same chapter, Exodus 15. All right, let's look at another one. Come on. Come on. Oh, guys, my, my computer has been freezing up. They're killing me. Just a second ago, when, before I started, they crashed me. I had to start from the, you know, fresh again. All right, this one here, that ain't it, guys. I think the next one, Vondo, is the next one, November 12th, 
2021, the little horn of Daniel. It says, President Obama is the horn. He will rise. There's no question. Uh, all these preachers, guys, all these preachers are fools thinking they might know who it is. I is it the guy from France? Is it the guy from Russia? Is it the guy from Israel? No, it's Barack Obama. President Obama's the horn. The, the horn's the Antichrist. We, we all know that in Bible prophecy. Who is the little horn? It's Barack Obama, and he will rise. God tells us plainly from a year and a half ago. Okay? The little horn of Daniel 7 and 8 is identified as President Obama in God's encoded word. Daniel 7, verses 8 and 11 says this. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. We all know that to be the Antichrist. Everybody who preaches Bible prophecy says that little horn is the Antichrist. Okay, David, Jeremiah, and all them. And they, where they get really funky is where they think he's a white dude from Europe. That's pretty funky. How about a black dude from the USA? And via Kenya. All right. He says, I saw the little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in his horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and mouth speaking great boastful things. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body was destroyed and given to the burning flame. When Jesus kills him, when he comes back at the Valley of Megiddo, the Battle of Armageddon, the Battle of Gog of Magog, at the Valley of Haman Gog, God's going to use words and columns of fire are going to come down and kill these people. And we see it right here in Daniel. And God says, that's going to be President Obama who, who I do that to. And this ELS adds to 23. And 23 is death. 23 is death. God is going to kill this guy. Let's see. It says, Revelation 13, 5. And there was given unto him a big, fat mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue for three and a half years, 40 and two months. And here's the code, the official code by Sean Mitchell. God's word in his dialect. Translation. President Obama is the horn, and he will rise the beast into the holy place. Clear as a bell. Next. Oh, no. He's got some notes here. Let's read a note. It says, in biblical Hebrew, the word Nasi means prince, chief, ruler, and is also the modern Hebrew word for president. So that's what it's telling us right there. It's telling us it's President Obama. Nasi. Okay, great. Great note. Good for us, and the Jews will get it when they see it. Boy, I wish they'd see it now. Oh, get this to any Jewish friends that you got and tell them God's speaking and Jesus is a Hebrew. He's not Catholic. Please get them on the page. Get them saved. Let's see them saved. Believe, guys. Believe. All right. This next one is from November 16th, 2021. November 16th, 2021. The little horn is identified. Ta -da -da, it's over. You can quit guessing and quit selling books and quit making tons of money on God's word what you're lying about because all your conclusions oppose this bible code this bible code says the antichrist the little horn is barack obama and you guys say he's a white european and people believe you they believe your lies you liars amir you're a liar jack you're a liar jan markell you're a liar we've encouraged you to get on page with god the bible code because it's truth let God be true and the rest of you liars. You are liars. And anybody that opposes the Bible code of Sean Mitchell, you're a liar. All right. The little horn of Daniel 7 and 8 is identified. Barack Obama. Antiochus Epiphanes was only a forerunner and a type of Antichrist. Now, guys, he was the guy that gave us Hanukkah. In the intertestament period, after Malachi stopped, it was completed, and there was a 400-year period before God spoke again, okay? In that time, this Greek guy was in charge of Jerusalem, 
and he desecrated the temple and he and he had a pig sacrificed on the altar and he brought in a an image of Zeus into the Holy of Holies. And there was a group of priests who were so enraged at this, the Maccabees, that was their last name. And their dad led the revolt and the sons got, got with him and they ran Greece out of town. And that's where Hanukkah come from. They only had one day's worth of oil left and they needed eight days because it takes eight days to make up and consecrate the holy oil for the lamp, the menorah. And all they had was one day's worth. And they went in, and while they were making up the new batch, they poured it in, and they filled it full, and it was burning all night long. And they came in the next day, and there was more oil in the jug. And they filled up the menorah, and it burned all day. And it happened for eight days, and that was the miracle. That's where Hanukkah come from, the Feast of Dedication, where they rededicated this temple to God after this man, who was an Antichrist figure, Antiochus Epiphanes, after he desecrated it. He, he is a picture of what's going to happen when Barack Obama comes in and does the same thing. He's going to stop the daily sacrifices. That's just as good as offering a pig. He's going to break his promise. He said they could sacrifice. Now he's going to say you can't sacrifice. You can't use this unto your Jehovah because there is no Jehovah. We have a Bible code with Barack Obama saying that. There is no Jehovah. There's only me. Okay? And so Antiochus Epiphanes was only a forerunner and a type. This Obama will do the same thing, okay? Something very important to note here is that both terms, Barack and Obama, share letters in Daniel 1130, and he shall return. And he shall return. They're share, Barack Obama shares letters. Both, both names share letters in that phrase. 2 Thessalonians 2.3 and four. Twenty-three. What? Okay. And four. What? Rapture door. Let's see what this verse says. Now, guys, this is an Old Testament um, Bible code. That means Hebrew, but it's saying what the New Testament teaches. Okay? The Jews are going to see that. That the New Testament wasn't something different. It was found in your Old Testament in the coded text. Same thing. And so here is the verse we're reading about that the Old Testament is explaining. And it was there first. The Old Testament existed before Paul come and wrote 2 Thessalonians. All right? And these people are going to see that. They're going to see it as a sign. These Bible codes are going to see many saved millions. Millions saved. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed. The uh, little horn is identified, says this. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That's the seed of the serpent in Genesis 3.15. These people know what it's talking about, okay? Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he's God. Y'all worship me. And here's the, the official code by Sean Mitchell, God's translation from his heart to us in his dialect. The little horn is identified, Barack Obama, into the house of the Lord to deceive for the lie. And what is the lie? You must get the mark of the beast. You must worship me and Lucifer, Satan, and you'll be saved. You'll be preserved. You'll be able to go on with this for the next thousand years in our thousand year millennial reign. And that's the lie. And they got the aliens all around them helping produce that lie and have been since 1947. You and I will be raptured here very soon and the alien agenda will really kick in heavy and people will start believing their doctrine. And so they're going to believe this lie. And they went into the house of the Lord to deceive for a lie. And, and the lie is, I am God, there is no Jehovah, y'all worship me. And I will make every one of your dreams come true. Just get this mark and we will have houses and lands and food and diapers for the kids, and come on in. We'll, we'll make your life worthwhile. You know, almost like being at a word of faith service. Almost like being at an NAR service where they're speaking lies right now of God will supply all your need through tons of money. Well, God will supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And that is one need every time the need arises. Not having billions so you don't have to ever worry about your needs. It's trusting God as every need arises, and he'll take care of every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen? 
Fondo says, this ELS adds up to 21. Lawlessness at the appointed time. I mean, is that perfect or what? What are we talking about? The little horn being identified. Barack Obama makes himself a God, exalts himself above all that's God, and he's being worshipped as God. Let's read that translation again. The little horn is identified, guys. Please, all you people, all you stupids out there in YouTubeville, bit shoot, who want to come mosey on and me meander here after we get off the live, God has already told you who the Antichrist is. Will you finally believe? Humble yourself in sackcloth and ashes, tears before a holy God. Humble yourself and say, Lord, okay, okay, I'm, I'm going with it. Barack Obama's your guy. And you go look at the Bible code book, Bible codes unsealed, and you'll see over a hundred codes there where God is telling us that Barack Obama is the Antichrist. Quit fighting him. Quit opposing Jesus. Quit coming up with something you've made up and you want the whole world to hear, hear your side of it. You oppose God. God's not happy with you, man. Daniel 1130, and he shall return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant, Barack Obama. He, he will have made a covenant for seven years and be all nice and great, great, great. And Sean will made his life a living hell because he brought heaven. And these guys hate heaven. These guys hate truth. These guys hate having the flashlight shown in their darkness and, sh and telling all the world these guys are idiots. These guys are liars. He's a faggot. Michelle's a dude. They're going to be preaching all that. Truth, truth, truth. And they will hate it. And then finally they'll have the power to kill Sean and the other guy. And that's when he breaks his covenant with Israel and starts making it hell for them. And they're going to realize this guy was the beast that Sean had been preaching about. All right, let's look at another one. This will be our last one. Armageddon, a very great slaughter from November 19th, 2021. Armageddon, a very great slaughter. Obama, Gog. Obama is Gog. The Battle of Gog, Magog, Ezekiel 38 and 39, and the Battle of Armageddon, which is Revelation 16, 16, 19, 19, what? What? Revelation's 22, right? Light, Revelation, 22 years after 9-11, for the next 9-11. Are you guys catching on here? God loves these numbers, man. He has a book called Numbers. He loves them so much are all the same battles told from different perspectives. What? The Battle of Armageddon and the Battle of Gog of Magog. Same war, different perspectives. It's only at the second coming of Jesus Christ and after the Battle of Armageddon that Ezekiel 39, verse 7 and 8 can possibly be fulfilled. Here's what they say. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. This is Jesus. He's getting ready to come back. And Vondo says this ELS adds to 17 victory. Hey guys, I'm looking, when he put this link up, I see 10, 153, 719. Or if you're in Europe, 197. It's here every time. And then the, so is the nine, that's judgment, 44. God's judgment is going to be Barack Obama on the, all the people who weren't raptured. This number is telling us a me message every time he puts up a link. And this particular ELS adds to 17. Continuing on with this passage, uh, God says, Jesus says, I'm going to make my name known among my people in Israel, and I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know that I'm the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Behold, it is come and it is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day whereof I have spoken. Mm. And Vano says, these codes link together perfectly, and the skip is only 1109 letters apart. 911? What? Hmm. All right. Okay, Sean has commentary here. He says, in the King James Bible, the phrase, the Holy One of Israel occurs many times and always refers to Messiah, the King. But the phrase, the Holy One in Israel, as opposed to the Holy One of Israel, as all the time. And this one time, the Holy One in Israel occurs only one time in Scripture here in Ezekiel 39, 7. This proves beyond doubt that Jesus Christ is physically present in Israel when he kills Barack Obama in the Ezekiel War. Amen? 
Then he says, please pay careful attention to these details as they're highly significant. The term Gog is standing vertically right next to the main term Armageddon and also in the text, a very great slaughter. That's quotes, a very great slaughter. The term Obama is also standing vertically next to he killed as his target. Jesus killed as his target. He was coming right for Barack Obama since Genesis 3.15 going to crush his head, going to kill this guy, and he's his target, and he's focused on killing him. God always does the worst first, the biggest first, and then he looks at all the little ones and say, who's next? And they're all like, ah! He did that to the big one? What's he going to do to us? That's God's MO, Jesus' MO all the time. Obama is standing vertically next to he killed as target, as his target, at the same skip of 7 4 these codes link together perfectly, and that's what Bondo has just put up there. And let's listen to the code by Sean Mitchell. Translation, God's word in God's dialect. Armageddon is a very great slaughter. That's where the blood runs up to the horse's nose for 120 miles. That's quite the slaughter. Armageddon is a very great slaughter. The appointed time of fire, Jehovah killed Obama, Gog, as his target. My words are like fire, the Holocaust, the great Holocaust of blood, the day of the Lord, from the time of God, thus the mystery will be fulfilled. The 11 will be fulfilled. He gathered, this is Revelation 16, 16, and he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Revelation 14, 20. Ooh, I love these numbers. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepresses even unto the horses' bridles by the space of a thousand six hundred furlongs. Daniel 7.11 I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. They prophesied this guy over and over and over, and God says, okay, Time for me to tell you, guys, we didn't know for sure until God told us, and it was revealed, and now it's plain as the nose on your face, plain as day to the people of the day who have searched the Bible codes, and we just roll our eyes at Macron and Putin and the rest of these idiots because they oppose God. Let's read that one more time, and we'll be calling it a night. Translation. Armageddon is a very great slaughter, the appointed time of fire. He, Jehovah, killed Obama, Gog, as his target. My words are like fire, the Holocaust fire. The great Holocaust of blood, the day of the Lord, from the time of God, thus the mystery will be over. The mystery will be fulfilled. Jesus is all about fulfilling mysteries. He's all about fulfilling the feast, and he's going to do it, guys. I love you, man. Let's pray together. Pray for one another. Check out that Nebraska license plate. <laughs> that, that was pretty trippy. And they're telling a story with it, guys. Okay? Telling a story. Let's pray. Lord, take care of Sean. Take care of him. Thank you for him. Thank you for your Moses and introducing us to him. And uh, our brother, body of Christ, the bride of Christ, the 24 elders, I pray you'll bless him. Bless him. Uh, boy, it sure would be good for you to finally reveal to him a uh, rapture date code. Whenever you're ready, Lord, we're ready. We're just asking for it as your excited children, your giddy, giddy children. Say, Lord, please show us a date. Whatever you want, Lord, we want your will to be done. And we do thank you for Sean. We thank you for our brothers and sisters here who join us every night. Bless, bless them with good health. Bless them with good finances in this next however many days we have left. Get, keep our food on our table. You promised you'd supply our need. We, we love that promise. We love everything about you, Lord. Everything you say in the plain text and the coded text, we shout and rejoice and just love. And your words become our words. Your heart becomes our heart, and we want it so. And please make it more so every day, Lord. May we stay, stay far away from the lies of the devil, the deception, the ways of the world, the way of secularism and hu, hu, uh, 
just humanism. We hate the ways of man, and we love your ways. And we want your ways to permeate our entire lives, in our hearts and our minds, Lord. May the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight at all times, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And bless everybody. Bless everybody on, the, on this team who helps out every night with wonderful comments, eternal comments. And we just praise you and bless you. And until you bring us together tomorrow night, we, we love you. We want to serve you and be faithful. Hear your voice and do what you're wanting us to do. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Love you. And I mean it, man. Hey, if you guys joined us late, check out the, the Bible codes. Sean just dropped a fresh Bible code uh, with lots of good hints and lots of proven facts. God getting up in the face of scoffers, man. All right. Hey, I love you. By his grace, we'll see you tomorrow night.